What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcut. I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. <laughs> so, we're going to... What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right. Sunday edition, 11 a.m. every Sunday here on ABC. <laughs> so, uh, for you guys out there, if you guys don't know or haven't tuned into the show... We cover tips, tricks, and things that are hopefully going to help your relationship be a better one. Hopefully take that relationship up to a greater level, um, which should be more enjoyable for you and your partner. And hopefully you guys will learn some things. And if you guys had some bad relationships out there, maybe you guys will learn some tips and tricks. But we'll hopefully turn the next relationship into a successful one. Everybody's got to go through the bad to get to the good. That's right. That's right. So it happens all the time. So, you know, just a disclaimer out there. We're not... Uh, we're not therapists. We're not. No, I do not have a degree in psychology or yeah, counseling. Yeah, yeah. So these However, just... <laughs> I've been through some very, very, very um, entertaining situations. Yeah. So I'm more than happy to share my experiences with you guys. Life experience. <laughs> the best experience. That's better than a book, I'll tell you. For sure. For sure. Uh, so this week we're going to cover balancing your relationship and balancing your family. Okay? Because... You know, in relationships, you know, if you have family or you both have family, you're going to probably include your family in your relationship at one time or another, okay? Whether it's you're just dating somebody for the first couple of months and you decide, hey, listen, I'm going to introduce to my family. You're going to go to a, a holiday event or whatever it may be. So they're going to get some interaction from your partner and your family. And hopefully you want it to be a positive one. And hopefully they want it to be a positive one. But... This does not happen all the time, okay? And as you, you know, grow with somebody, you're going to be around their family more and they're going to be around you and so on and so on. Most of the time. Whatever. Most of the time, right? Or you're just going to have some <laughs> sort of interaction, you know, one way or sure. the other, right? So, you know, how to balance these things because that line sometimes gets crossed or it gets a real gray area blurry. as far as that goes. Blurry. A little blurry. Um, and we don't really know where the sticking point should be on both sides. So let's talk about this. Let's like talk about some examples. Like, are we talking about like whose side to pick? Or, right. So know. let's say, tough. you know, you, you, you go over to, to the family's house, not your family, the, your significant other's family, and you guys have a disagreement about something, right? Um, I think that this is the best and you think this is the best and you guys kind of get into some sort of, I don't want to say argument, but... Yeah, some sort of argument, right? Where you guys are kind of going back and forth about these things. And then they develop animosity against you, right? So at that point, then you go home and, you know, then your significant other is telling you, hey, listen, my mom's mad at you because you said this and, you know, I think that she was right. And, and then you're like, well, you know, what about me? So at that point, it kind of isolates the person too, right? Because they're like, well, you know, do you care about me more or do you care about them more? And that's a hard one to choose from because obviously if that's their mom and you're the significant other, it puts them in a hard place, right? Hmm. It, Sound familiar? It does. It, it goes in a, you go, you go in a hard place right there. So, you know. John's been there before. <laughs> Listen, I've been there. I know how it is. Yeah, I know how it is um, too. But, you know, I mean, with that, then, then you got to kind of set the boundaries, right? right? So you say, Listen, that's your family. I, I know you love your family and all this, but let's say we're, we've been together for four years at that point, then you're going to kind of want to take my side on some things or make me a priority to a certain extent, right? And if you guys are married and have a family, then the rules change to a certain extent. At least it does when, with our relationship, the way it happened. Yeah, it should. Um, so, you know, when you get married and you have kids, then that becomes your core family. Where before, when you were getting raised with a kid and that was your dad or mom, that was your core family too, right? Now, you can still have your core family as far as your parents and stuff like that. 
But it's really not your core, right? So, you know, bless my dad because he's no longer here. But he instilled something into me. And yes, mom, I know you're watching. And I apologize in advance because I'm sure you're going to love this story. But he instilled in me that you had your core family at that time. You know, like your mom, your dad, brother, sister, whatever it might be. That's your core family, right? And then what he would always tell me, right, when I was a kid, is he would tell me, when you find the man that you love, right, and you marry this man, and you have your children with him and everything, I'm going to be second. Your mom's going to be second. We're going to come secondary to your core family. There's, We're not saying that mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, uncle and aunt, brothers, and cousins, sister, brothers and sisters, yeah. we're not saying that they don't matter because of course they matter and they're important and we love them unconditionally of course mm -hmm. but there is your core family right so when it comes to that if you're in a relationship ultimately you know one of two things needs to happen in this particular scenario that john is discussing either a you are going to either way you look at it you should back up your significant other mm -hmm. right no matter what back them up a hundred percent and always have their back right now let's say you really do kind of agree with your mom right or you maybe kind of agree with your dad you're gonna still back them up at the time right mm -hmm. but maybe on the ride home or when you get to the house and things cool down a little bit or maybe wait a day or whatever it might be you know maybe say hey listen can I give you a different outlook on right. something? You know, right. like just just think about it. I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying she's right. I'm not saying he's right. right. All I'm saying is, you know, I'm trying to be neutral here. And maybe there was a different, maybe the different point you're not looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, because listen, you can always be wrong. You could be right. Mm -hmm. There's a plenty of different ways mm -hmm. you could spin something, right? Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the way I was taught anyway, is that I have to always have my husband's back. Mm -hmm no matter what. Mm -hmm. So even in public, right? Mm -hmm. If he's wrong, I'm going to back him up. Right. In my family, if he's wrong, I'm still going to back him up. Right. I might step outside and be like, hey, that wasn't right. But then I always back him up. Mm -hmm. So I really do think, you know, it, I, and sometimes it gets blurry because, you know, what if they're really close to their mom and dad? You know, maybe they, you might feel like they put your mom or dad first, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean I, me and John personally went through this with his dad. Okay, mm -hmm. and I love Pete. You know, he's me and him are actually pretty close, and come to find out, we're a lot alike, <laughs> and um, that's probably why we didn't get along. <laughs> um, and we both have very strong personalities, so you know, us screaming across the kitchen when John, poor John's in the middle, like, oh goodness gracious, I have my pregnant wife over here and my dad, and they're screaming at each other, and I don't know. I mean, do you remember that? I remember. So he, we've been in those crossroads. So we're not even talking about like, hey. You know, do this, do that. We're telling you, hey, guess guys, we've been there. Mm -hmm. We know what it feels like. Absolutely. He knows what it feels like to be in the middle. For sure. I know what it feels like to be in the middle and have to choose between, you know, what my dad said and what he's saying. And what what do, what do you do? How do you know what's right and wrong? Right. You know, so there's a fine line. But, you know, if, you, if you've been with the person for two weeks... Yeah, I can't give you. I can't give you too much yeah. to go there. Then right? you might, you know, you might, you might not have to take sides, right? But, <laughs> but if you invested like four or five, you know, even two or three years, that's a long time to be with somebody. Right. If you're living with them, you know, you know, you're you're having some sort of future. You know, at that point, then you're gonna have to start, you know, taking their side to a certain extent. And then if they're wrong, having a discussion with them afterwards, and then trying to find a resolution to the problem maybe find they had resolution. with the family member, right? But you know, if those family members don't. If they don't want to, they don't listen. If there's a problem with a family member and your significant other, it was like, you know, finally after a little bit, like, okay, I, I understand what you're saying, honey. You know what? I'll, I'll apologize or at least try to make it right. They try to make that effort. And then if that family member is like, well, I don't care or it doesn't matter to me or I don't want to hear it. And then they just keep, you know, just downgrading that person or degrading that person, excuse me. At that point, then, you know, then you got to take your, your partner's side and be like, well, listen, you know, they're trying to at least step up their game and, and do this to make things right. And at that point, you know, you're not. So then you got to ask them, like, why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you supporting my relationship and or my significant Who I love, other? right. Because, you know, because then you're disrespecting me to a certain extent at that point because you're not respecting my choice and partner and who I want to bring around and who I want in my life and who I want near me. And, you know, that's kind of where, you know, you have to put that little line in the sand and be like, and some people listen, this never is the way learn. it's going to be. 
Some people never learn that line. Well, listen, the problem is with those people is that when you get to that extent and you're always worried about, let's say you're 60 years old <laughs> and you're worried about your mom and your brother and this and that at the house and you can't get away and you got to go all free time or you're calling them, you know, on your free time at the house all the time and it's an everyday event. Might be an issue. There might be an issue. <laughs> Okay, and at that point, if your partner's feeling isolated or is feeling like a third wheel or or not feeling the love, okay, that's gonna affect your relationship. Right. And then you know at that point, and then you're you're hammering down on them about your family or whatever problems that they're bringing, and then you're going back to your family and probably talking about some of these problems and making it even worse. It makes it bad. Don't do that. You're gonna you're gonna set yourself up for failure, and if you really care about that person. Um, it's not going to make them feel good at all. And at that point, that could that could be detrimental to the relationship mm -hmm. and the future of the relationship. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing we always say is, is if you do have these problems, right, or anything you're doing, identify the problem. That's the first step in what you, what you want to do for resolution. Identify the problem, figure it out. At that point, communicate with your partner. That's if the, the next thing, right? And then find some sort of resolution to that problem. Um, it could be a compromise. Sometimes you, know. you might have to step up to the plate and just, you might have to take a hit for your partner. You know, it, it, it this happens often. And the reason I'm saying it is because I'm telling you, me and John have been there, right? So, you know, he's had to take a hit for me because, you know, his dad just, you know, me and his dad, I'm telling you, we didn't get along at all. And at some point, I'll never forget it too because I, I, I would argue with John. And we get into arguments about it. Like, you're picking your dad over me. And he's like, I'm not picking sides. This is just what's going on. I'm trying to just, I'm basing these two things. This is exactly what happened. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're picking him over me. I'm supposed to be first. Me, me, me. I'm first, you know. And um, and this baby's first. <laughs> so either way you look at it, baby, no baby. Right. You know, he did have to step up at some point and be like, hey, listen. Whether you like her or not, she's not going anywhere. So you might as well try to figure out how you're going to like her mm -hmm. because she's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I love her. She's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. But you see how he stood up and said, hey, listen. And you may not want, I mean, some pe some people fear their parents, mm -hmm. you know, or might fear what they do or might fear how they might react. Mm -hmm. And some people, especially very cultural people like mm -hmm. Greeks, Indians, you know, people that come of like super, super strong cultures. A lot of those people they won't do it if their parents say no that is a golden no that's right and they that's like listen my parents said no and that's what it was mm -hmm. i don't care if i'm you know 25 55 65 they said no i'm not doing it mm -hmm. you're you know we're, listen it's 2021 you know we're no longer in the 1920s all right i hate to say it but you know it's you're gonna have to step up and you're gonna have to, if you really truly love this person you're gonna have to find a compromise yeah. and if your parents are not or your sister brother whoever it is that's having the argument with your significant other if your significant other is willing to apologize they're gonna need to meet at the halfway point mm -hmm. and say hey listen we're just gonna have to come to an amicable point mm -hmm. right we're gonna have to agree to disagree and then guess what we're gonna move forward because we have many many more events christmas thanksgiving fourth of july that we want to spend together all those times that you figure out think about all the times that you really like you're gonna miss out or you have to split it up it's tough when you got to split it up it's tough i mean what are you going to leave your significant other home while you go hang out with your parents well that's the thing if, if you can't do that you know if, if you're i mean you can you want to bring your sister together to like holidays listen even but it if won't be nice even if there's fighting right in, in 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 between your family and your loved one holidays it's like an, an you know an unnamed rule under you the blanket. put things aside. <laughs> Goes under the blanket. You be cordial. <laughs> One day. At the holiday. You get through the holiday. And at that point, you can tell them to screw off. <laughs> you know, like that. But you, you've done it. On the, the way out, right? To the car. You've done it for By the, the family, way. Right? By the way, one more thing. And it wasn't Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, the best thing to do is be cordial, <laughs> try to have a good holiday or whatever it is, and then just move on because, right. you know, you want you don't want to make your partner feel isolated from their family either, right? Right. And they, they shouldn't be doing that to you either, so it's a reciprocal thing. Yeah. Um, but at that point, you should be able to, you know, at least get by things. And your partner should make it a point to have you there. If a family member says, well, I'm not going to come if they come, then at that point, like, well, I guess I'm not going to come either then. Right. Right. You know, that's where you kind of stand your ground, you know, against your family, wherever it is. And like, listen, if you're not willing to accept this person. This person's part of me. Then you're not willing to accept me either. Why? 
Right. You know, and then kind of get through that. So these are just some of the things <laughs> that you guys can learn from us. It's an important one. It's, it's a big one. It's a big one. I think a lot of people have to deal with it because a lot of people, you know. I went there my whole life. You know, so. relationships, you know, you're, you're meeting new people, new family members. They might, you know, look at you, judge you, and at that point cause issues or it might be problems from before. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But just watch out for it. Try to do the right thing. Prioritize your relationship and your loved one. And just, you know, make sure you put that line in the sand that differentiates. Always have your partners back. All right. Always. So this has just been another Cupid's Corner with me and Sharice. We appreciate you guys all tuning in every Sunday at 11 a.m. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you then.